for fast and accurate school closing information, log on to whsv.com. For watching the Valley's leading news source, WHSV TV3 News at 11, making a difference for you. This time next week, the General Assembly will reconvene among some of the hot button issues, Interstate 81. And family members of the now deceased West Virginia coal miners continue to question the confusion that turned their cheers into cries. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Corso. And I'm Jamie Caron. If you've traveled on Interstate 81 lately, you know that there's a lot that needs to be done to get traffic flowing better. And starting next week, some steps will be taken to get things rolling. WHSB's Laura Speakman met up with one Virginia legislator who held his own town hall style meeting in Stanton. Laura Delegate Chris Saxman says this year's General Assembly could bring about some changes. Jamie, he says it could take some time, but he feels this is the year the rest of the state will get the needed dough for improvements. I have a, a lot of a lot of issues to deal with. There's not going to be one set silver bullet bang that's going to solve all our problems. The ideas to improve Interstate 81 are on the move in the General Assembly. Delegate Chris Saxman says there's a resolution for the stretch of road dealing first and foremost with added lanes. I think the, the, legis the legislators on 81 want three lanes, potentially dedicating certain lanes to certain vehicles, the left lane to cars, the middle lane to a mixture of cars and trucks, and perhaps the right lane to trucks only. While that could help, more and more people want to get trucks off the road. One idea that keeps coming up, putting the cargo on the railroads. But Saxman says it's not as simple to just throw it on the rails. We have to have the ability for the freight traffic to go there. And that's indeterminate that that would actually happen. You have to have other states in cooperation. So that becomes a federal matter. And then you have to have the rail companies also involved in that process. Of course, the state has to figure out how to pay for the projects. But Saxman says the state can't rush to toll Interstate 81. It is inequitable to suggest that given all the money we've been putting into other areas of the Commonwealth because it would put us at a, at a, a serious disadvantage economically. Even if the resolution passes through, Saxman reminds the road work won't happen overnight. Will it happen the next day? Will they go out and see the sun is shining instead of raining? No, it takes time to build roads and maintain roads and these kinds of things. Saxman also mentioned the General Assembly session will bring a pleasant surprise for the Virginia School for the Deaf and Blind in Stanton. The session will start a week from today. Live in the newsroom, Lars Speakman, WHSV News. The state's largest conservative group unveiled its legislative agenda today for the upcoming General Assembly session. The Family Foundation wants to strip abortion providers of state funds, promote ongoing efforts to stamp out gay marriage, force state-funded libraries to put filters on computers, stop invasive surveys from being given to children without parental consent, and ban gay straight, gay straight alliances in public schools. The owners of the coal mine that became a tomb for 12 miners are taking some blame tonight, not for the fatal accident, but for the awful confusion that allowed families of the dead to believe their loved ones had been found alive. The mix-up in communications lasted three hours before the awful truth turned joy into anguish. ABC Sonia Crawford has more now from the scene community had believed in 12 miracles. Now they have to settle for one. 27-year-old Randall McCloy Jr. cannot talk about his ordeal. He's sedated on a ventilator while he recovers from dehydration, carbon monoxide exposure, and a partially collapsed lung. Having been uh, laying still for so many hours uh, and um, um, poorly hydrated for that period of time has resulted in some uh, kidney dysfunction. McCloy was able to squeeze his wife's hand. While the sun doesn't always shine in West Virginia, its people always do. The company that owns the Sago mine believes some employees and others involved in the rescue efforts called families after an initial report that 12 of the 13 miners were found alive. They're all alive, all of them. The families wanted to know why the company let them believe a lie for three hours. Obviously some miscommunication, but, but there's just no explanation for, for somebody not doing the right thing, at least stopping the celebrating, you know. Company officials say they waited to make sure they had all the information right. We made what we believe to be the best decisions based on the information available while working under extreme stress and physical exhaustion. All 12 bodies were brought out of the mine this morning. Federal and state investigations are underway, not only into the cause of the explosion, but into the heart-wrenching confusion that followed. Sonia Crawford, ABC News, Buchanan, West Virginia. 
Well, if you've been outside tonight or this morning, you might notice skies are fairly clear out there, though we're still looking for some clouds to build into the area. Taking a look at the radar in the northeast quarter of the country, you're finding not much in our area. All the activity is along the Great Lakes and through uh, central Pennsylvania up into New England. And you can see the rotation on that. There's low pressure up that way, folks, that will eventually move off the coast. Temperatures are fairly comfortable here. And of course, this is during the game. Uh, not expecting these temperatures to drop too much more tonight. And if you look at the dew points, they're right behind these. So uh, essentially what we are looking for is the potential for some fog to develop, and it could be dense here and there. Later, uh, as we get into Friday, well, we're going to have a trough build over the East Coast. You can see those temperatures drop for Friday and Saturday. It's actually going to be a little bit winter-like. Have all your weather for you later. Now it's back to the news. Thanks, George. Well, police say they've recovered a gun believed to be used in the shooting of two Mormon missionaries. In a statement released today, Chesapeake police also say they've identified persons possibly involved. A 21-year-old Utah man died from his injuries Tuesday morning. A fellow 19-year-old missionary remains in the hospital. Police believe the men were shot because they witnessed a crime as they went door to door, but were not victims of a hate crime. Police say they can see their suspect, but they need you to tell them who he is. Stanton police are investigating a theft at the Jiffy Mart. They say that around 3 o'clock in the afternoon on December 31st, a black man entered the business, went into the back room, and took some money. The store was open at the time. These are surveillance photos of the man. Anyone with information on who he is should contact the Stanton Police Department or Crime Stoppers. Well, the local Hispanic community is frowning at some Valley lawmakers tonight. Lawmakers are supporting a new state law barring illegal immigrants from receiving state-funded benefits. But as WHSV's Che Lee tells us, Hispanic activists say it's a bad idea because those who are here legally may end up getting hurt. To me, it's sending a message, that a xenophobic message, you know, that we're afraid of foreigners. We're Rick Castaneda says the law is redundant because federal laws already prevent illegal immigrants from getting benefits. People without a social security card will not be able to get things like Medicaid and temporary assistance for their family. Many people who are um, documented immigrants who are here legally, uh, so to speak, um, I think may be confused by this legislation um, uh, because it's not necessarily clear. State Senator Mark Openshane stands behind the law. Many of our uh, well-intentioned policies have the effect of essentially subsidizing the behavior of the illegal immigration. He says the state is simply working with the federal government to encourage legal immigration. The fact that we save money is of secondary importance to making sure that we continue to live in and promote uh, a, a nation of laws. And in Harrisonburg, Shaley, WHSV News. Well, there are still plenty more to come tonight. Ariel Sharon is rushed to the hospital. Officials say the Israeli Prime Minister suffered a significant stroke. And the owner of the Shenandoah Speedway puts the pedal to the metal. Well, there'll be a little fog overnight, and then we'll talk about the potential return of winter. Have it all for you when we come back from the break. First, we'll take a look at the Almanac numbers for yesterday. This TV3 weather report is brought to you by the Charlie Oba Auto Group. The South's winning number! Welcome to Lotto South. I'm Mickey Spencer. Match all six numbers in any order. You could win the estimated $2 million jackpot. Good luck. First number tonight is 41, followed by 33. Up next, the number two. And then we have 31. 11 is your next number. And 19. Those are your winning numbers for tonight. Good night from Lotto South. And tonight's winning pick three numbers are two, six, and three. That's two, six, three. Look for cash five numbers on the side of your screen. Pick four, seven, nine, one, and five. Seven, nine, one, five. Good night from the Virginia Lottery. If you're busy like me, you know that every minute counts. And that's why all Nextel phones come with built-in walkie-talkie, so you can get more things done instantly. And Nextel keeps me connected wherever I am through Group Connect walkie-talkie. And email and web capabilities allow me to send audio, pictures, and text on the go. Get a free i710 when you sign up for a two-year agreement. Plans start at just $36.99. Call 877-97-NEXTEL today. People who visit Geico.com could save hundreds on car insurance, yeah? Big news, yeah? But not if no one hears it, which is why I need you to help spread the word. 
Otherwise, our big news is nothing but a stray little fact. A wee orphan of truth wandering the streets looking for our home in someone's ear. Oh, that was easy. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The TV3 Weather Phone Line, brought to you by Shenandoah Valley Electric Cooperative. Closed captioning for WHSV News at 11 is sponsored by Harrisonburg Nissan and the Stanton Auto Group. George Hirschman in the TV3 Weather Lab with all your latest weather updates. And a mostly clear night out there in most areas, but some clouds are headed our way. We're expecting that to build in overnight. Let's take a look right now. Sky Cam, and we see a few clouds to the south there, and some of those are moving in our direction. No precipitation anticipated tonight, although a possibility for an isolated snow shower over West Virginia, western facing slopes there, and certainly not much as far as any accumulation is concerned. We do have some snow up uh, to the north of us there along the Great Lakes, and that's always expected about this time of the year. We are picking up some clouds, uh, not much at least at this time as far as precip. Looking at the radar satellite picture, well, that's even more evident as some clouds move out now to the south east of us down towards Norfolk Way and there's some uh, echoes we're picking up there in Pennsylvania and as I said some of these may drift down to the western side and if they do a uh, little orographic lifting there to produce some snow shower activity but not much as far as any accumulation overnight uh, temperatures uh, during the game were reported 39 in Woodstock 41 in Luray, 47 Stanley 43 10th Legion and 39 with Cool Eddie Churchville 41 Carl DePoy called in with a 42 and Phil said it was uh, 37 down in Waynesboro and Bob a, a uh, 35 down in Stewart's draft tonight and most of these temperatures should be about there now and should pretty much stay very close to this range overnight 43 in Moorefield and 35 in Franklin currently it's 43 outside our studios 40 on the dew point humidity 90 percent let you know a little surface moisture out there for that fog overnight 29.7 six in the barometric pressure winds are out of the west one to five miles per hour as we speak big picture across the country is uh the, the, the moderate uh, temperatures that we're seeing all through uh, Central uh, America and then the cold air to the north, uh, very moderate for this time of the year, except down Texas where it's very warm and still very dry and still have problems with some fire activity. And this cold air you see up here to the north, little trough going to be building over the weekend and some of that's going to drift down in our neighborhood and that will definitely make a difference. This is what it looks like right now on the big map and uh, we do have some Echoes are picking up there over the Great Lakes, out to the west, another low pressure center. Lots of rain moving on shore in the Pacific Northwest. That should move up into Canada, not really affect us in the next few days. And we are picking up some clouds coming up from the uh, southwest at this time. They should build in overnight. Eventually, high pressure will get to the coast after the weekend, and we'll get a return flow. Things are going to be warming up around here. Uh, going to keep it in that uh, below uh, norms, for above norms, I should say. For, uh, as far as the winter temperatures. 48 hour future cast looks like this. We'll put it into motion. Low pressure, that's the one we saw over the Great Lakes. That's going to be moving off the coast. Then we'll have some uh, uh, moisture develop off the coast, and low pressure will develop off the coast, which has another potential as we put this into greater uh, uh, motion. And once again, cooler air moves into the neighborhood, and then this low pressure, depending on how it tracks up the coast, could turn into a nor'easter, producing lots of snow for New England area. A little further out to sea, well, then a little less of a chance of that happening. Tonight, overnight, West Virginia, 35, mostly cloudy, a chance of some snow shower activity with the winds out of the west, 10 to 15. Fog will be a problem. Fog will be a problem here as well with temperatures in the upper 30s uh, under mostly cloudy skies when they build in. Tomorrow, we're looking for uh, temperatures near about what they were today in the upper 40s, but mostly cloudy skies for the day. And then the seven-day forecast looks a bit like this, folks, upper 40s tomorrow. And then cooling off as that trough builds down in to our region here uh, with the chance of some snow shower activity uh, over in West Virginia. And uh, then we'll get back to uh, warmer temperatures as we get into next week. And that's it from the Weather Lab. Now back to you. All righty, thank you, George. Well, cholesterol-lowering statin drugs have been linked to reducing the risk for a host of illnesses, but can they also reduce the risk of cancer? ABC's Dr. Timothy Johnson has more in our Medical Minute. Statin drugs are the most effective cholesterol-lowering drugs that people can take. Because excess cholesterol can cause many problems in the body, lowering cholesterol with statin medication could improve your health in multiple areas. Early research even suggested the drugs might reduce the risk of many kinds of cancer, including colon, prostate, breast, and lung cancers. To test this theory, researchers compiled data from 26 studies that involved more than 86,000 participants in total. They examined whether people taking statins rather than a placebo pill were less likely to develop cancer later in life. 
The result showed that both groups were equally at risk for cancer diagnoses and cancer deaths. Statin patients were diagnosed with cancer just as often as control patients, meaning the statin drugs did not protect against cancer. There was no type of cancer that showed reduced risk with statin treatment. However, researchers also found that statins don't increase the risk for cancer, which is good news for the millions of patients taking statins for lower cholesterol and reduced risk of heart disease and stroke. With this Medical Minute, I'm Dr. Timothy Johnson. Up next, we'll tell you what landmark in the Queen City is set to reopen this week. And later, we'll tell you how you can own a two-headed rattlesnake. Stay with us. At Harrisonburg Nissan, we understand our customers want a great price. We understand they want a huge selection, and we understand they want great service. Good process. The prices were fair. The service was excellent, uh, very easy to deal with. As long as I'm living in Harrisonburg or Rockingham County, I'm not going to get a car from anybody else. Harrisonburg Nissan's truck and SUV monster sale. Up to $6,000 in cash savings on Nissan Titan and Frontier. Stop by and you'll understand why everybody's talking about Harrisonburg Nissan. They remind you of the first time you fell in love. And now, a lifetime of treasured memories comes alive in this historic television offer. All the classics you love in one great collection. These hits never sounded better, even when they're scratched. Available separately or in a complete set, loaded with prizes from $50 to $50,000, produced exclusively by the Virginia Lottery. Now available in stores. Your hit family scratcher could win you even more prizes in Virginia's greatest hit sweepstakes. The i710 from Nextel. GPS enabled for voice guided directions, color screen, speakerphone, and a walkie talkie that connects coast to coast in under a second. And now it's free. Call 877 Nextel to shop or find a store. Now get all your incoming calls free with Nextel's free incoming plan. Call 877 Nextel now. Get ready for a ride of your life. Toyota trucks are a great value and fuel efficient. 4x2 Tacoma models are EPA estimated as high as 26 MPG highway. That's among the highest of all pickups. And 4x2 Tundras are EPA estimated 22 MPG highway. Most 4x4 Tacomas and Tundras have the capacity to get around 400 highway miles per tank full. Even Toyota trucks get good fuel economy. Toyota, moving forward. You're watching WHSV News at 11 with Bob Corso, Jamie Karat, Meteorologist George Hirschman and Joe Downs with sports. Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon has undergone, undergone lengthy surgery following a life-threatening stroke. The surgery was needed to drain blood from his brain. Doctors trying to save his life placed Sharon on a respirator. Israel Radio quoted an unidentified Israeli health official as saying that Sharon's prospects of a full recovery are slim. His deputy has assumed Sharon's powers. An old movie theater in downtown Stanton will throw its open its doors once again. The visual light is gearing up to reopen this Friday for its first movie, The Squid and the Whale. The new theater opens seven days a week, is equipped with two theaters, stadium seating, plush new seats, and a 30-foot screen. Well, could there be races at a Page County track on Friday nights in addition to Saturday nights? Jeff Vaughn, the owner of the Shenandoah Speedway, is seeking that and other changes to the track special use permit. WHSV's Lauren McKay reports. The Shenandoah Speedway's current special use permit allows racing on Saturday nights from 6 to 11. It also allows training and testing Monday through Friday from 8 in the morning to 9 at night. Vaughn says standard racing procedures for short tracks allow for pre-racing activities. Therefore, he wants more available time for practicing. What I'm asking for is to be able to continue to practice and test or train through those time, the current time frames, but I modify it for on Saturdays to be able to open the gates at 8 a.m. He also wants Fridays to be added as a racing day in order to attract racers from Virginia who attend other short track races on Saturday nights. We're, we're the new kid on the block, so in order for us to get some of their cars to come take a look at our track, we have to offer a different date than what they have. So our option is Friday nights. Racing on Friday nights would also allow him to host some two-day national events. If they don't agree to uh, basically what I've asked for, it cuts the uh, 
potential of revenue and the, the, the success of this operation in half. In Page County, Lauren McKay, WHSV News. And this brings us to tonight's WHSV.com poll question. We ask, do you think the Shenandoah Speedway should be granted expanded hours and higher noise levels to practice and race? 69% of those responding said yes, while 31% voted no. Nearly 90 people responded to tonight's poll. Well, would you expect all the stock car fans around here? That's what I'm saying. Maybe. A lot of race fans around here. To Absolutely. You know, the Daytona 500 right around the corner. Everybody really psyched. But tonight we're talking college hoops. hoops. Right. Men's college basketball was in the local spotlight tonight as Bridgewater and EMU were back at home after long holiday breaks. In high school hoops, the Turner Ashby girls were looking to break the log jam atop the Valley District with Ari Lee in town. Plus, we hit the mats with high school wrestling when sports return. Wake up with us tomorrow morning on Daybreak starting at 5.30. Jay will have your weather forecast every 10 minutes. Guys, we've got one more day of mild temperatures, and then we're going to cool down for the late week. We'll tell you how cool it's going to get. Plus, it's probably already hit your school or work, but you can still avoid catching the flu or common cold. We'll have some tips to stay healthy. That's tomorrow morning on Daybreak. We will see you then. Come on, here's your chance. Don't let it slip right through your hands. Are you ready for the ride? of your life. Toyota, moving forward. They remind you of the first time you fell in love. And now, a lifetime of treasured memories comes alive in this historic television offer. All the classics you love in one great collection. These hits never sounded better, even when they're scratched. Available separately or in a complete set, loaded with prizes from fifty dollars to $50,000, produced exclusively by the Virginia Lottery. Now available in stores. Your hit family scratcher could win you even more prizes in Virginia's greatest hit sweepstakes. Everyone's flipping for all-you-can-eat pancakes at IHOP. We'll bring you stacks of our irresistibly delicious, world-famous, fluffy buttermilk pancakes till you've had your fill. With all your favorites from $4.99, you'll flip for all-you-can-eat pancakes, too. IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. IHOP's open 24 hours. That's hot food and warm smiles from breakfast to dinner and back again. IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Ready for a new TV? Drop by Crutchfield, where you can enjoy shopping. We're looking for a big screen TV. And I want one we can hang on the wall. Well, I'm sure we have a set that'll make you both happy. The good folks at Crutchfield will help you make a smart decision. Relax and compare similar models in a home-like setting. Delivery is free, and custom installation is optional. Crutchfield, it's the place to go for a great selection of flat panel TVs and the best help in town. Rio Hill, Charlottesville, and Market Square East, Harrisonburg. If you're busy like me, you know that every minute counts. And that's why all Nextel phones come with built-in walkie-talkie, so you can get more things done instantly. And Nextel keeps me connected wherever I am through Group Connect walkie-talkie. And email and web capabilities allow me to send audio, pictures, and text on the go. Get a free i710 when you sign up for a two-year agreement. And get all your incoming calls free with Nextel's free incoming plan. Call 877-97-NEXTEL today. This WHSV Sports Report is brought to you by Nextel. Last night, the Bridgewater women pulled off the stunner, knocking off nationally ranked Randolph Macon at Nininger Hall. Tonight, the BC men were looking to make a clean sweep of the Yellow Jackets. Women's head coach Gene Willie, fresh off her squad's upset of the seventh ranked team of the nation, came out looking to see if Bill Leatherman's men's team could knock off the 17th ranked Yellow Jackets on the men's side. Well, it didn't look good at the break. BC down by seven, and Stephen Sutherland adds on with a floater to start the second. However, the Eagles don't surrender. Jay Stratman battles inside to get the hoop and the harm. Still attacking the paint, Michael Obelotti. Yes, he gets downright artistic with a finger roll, but Randy Mack is just too tough tonight as they cruise to a 70-63 win. Meanwhile, the Eagles rivals to the north. The Royals of EMU were back at the Palatial University Commons. Take on out of conference. Green 
Vero College. I think I need to gargle with razor blades. Points. We're at a premium early as it took nearly three minutes to light the scoreboard. Steve Berg hits the three for Greensboro. The Royals turn inside for early scoring. Corey Bailey with the turnaround one-hander to get EMU on the board. Next, Brad Parks battles inside before going off the glass for two. But two can play that game off the miss. Bryant Camp gathers the rebound and gets the put back as the Pride retake the lead. However, the Royals can play from the perimeter as well. Corey Whiting, string music for three. EMU retakes the advantage, but Greensboro comes back to win 60 to 56. High school hoops where the Turner Ashby girls still sit atop the Valley District standings and still can't gain any breathing room. The Stewart's draft and Spotswood lurk just a game back. Tonight they took on the team that used to dominate the Valley, R.E. Lee. Up by seven at the break. The Knights still aren't satisfied working the ball inside to the acrobatic Nikki Newman for the deuce. Later in the third quarter, a frustrated Lee squad starts to flex its muscle. Kaya Howard lowers the boom on Jordan Burkholder, and Jordan's the worst for wear. But she's tough getting back in the game and making the Lee ladies pay. First, getting the floater in the paint to fall. Then on the fast break, Burkholder would complete the pretty play with the easy layup. And the Knights stay undefeated in the Valley, winning 70-42. High School Restaurant Wrestling, where perennial Valley District powerhouse Turner Ashby, with their football players back in the fold after taking the state title, were out to prove they were still the ones to beat tonight in the tri meet at Broadway. However, it was the Cougars and host Gobblers who wrestled first. The 189 pounders drafts Jordan Taylor in trouble and Mitch Duro. Yes, he finishes him off, scoring the fall in the 215 pound match. Drafts Chris Diggs gets it right back as he has Brad Spade right where he wants him for the pinfall. Then there were the heavyweights. Drafts Jeremy Clausen working the weight, gets the fall on Eric Osida. Down we go to the 119 pounds. Lightweights and Broadway's Jeremy Spitzer wastes a little time. It took him less than a minute to pin Mickey Holber. To the tri meet in Harrisonburg now, Ari Lee in Rockbridge County get the get the party started 112 pounds we go leaves travis burner working on the wildcats chad connor he, would, he wouldn't get the fall but burner would get the win on points next class up leaves zach thompson trying to keep his shoulders off the mat but rock bridges jordan crowder is too much he gets the fall to the 125 pound range watch rock bridges vince cooper lift leaves adam dobzinski yes off the mat dobzink zeneke <laughs> Uh, would escape, but he's just delaying the inevitable. Cooper would make short work. To the NFL playoffs, where the Redskins earned their day to the wild card weekend by whipping off five straight wins, and running back Clinton Portis is a big reason why. Portis, who had only rushed for 100 yards or more four times in the season's first 11 games, broke the century mark in each of those five wins and route to breaking the franchise's single season rushing record with more than 1,500 yards. You know, that's what they brought me here for, and uh, to know that, that in such a short time that I've already uh, broke the records, and, you know, it's just uh, I'm on my way. Uh, hopefully I can continue to break them. However, the Bucks have a Cadillac of their own. The Skins' defense will have to contend with rookie running back Tarnell Williams, the first-year man out of Auburn, was named the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year, winning in a landslide, garnering 47 of 50 votes cast. Williams rushed for more than 1,100 yards and six touchdowns for Tampa Bay this season. The Redskins and Buccaneers kick off Wild Card Weekend Saturday at 4.30 right here on WHSB. The Jaguars and Patriots square off in Saturday's nightcap, also right here on TV3. Your home for Super Bowl 40. And I need to thank Portis and Brunel for helping me win our fantasy yeah, football yeah, league. Yeah, I ponied up my money already. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> All right. Well, straight ahead, if you've always wanted to own a two-headed rattler, you won't want to miss this next story. And George will have a final check of your weather forecast. Stay with us. Listen for TV3 news and weather updates on your hometown country connection. Today's country and your all-time favorites. 104.3 Country KCY. Everyone's flipping for all-you-can-eat pancakes at IHOP. We'll bring you stacks of our irresistibly delicious, world-famous, fluffy buttermilk pancakes till you've had your fill. With all your favorites from $4.99, you'll flip for all-you-can-eat pancakes, too. IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. IHOP's open 24 hours. That's hot food and warm smiles from breakfast to dinner and back again. IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy.
At Harrisonburg Nissan, we understand our customers want a great price. We understand they want a huge selection, and we understand they want great service. Good process, the prices were fair, the service was excellent, uh, very easy to deal with. As long as I'm living in Harrisonburg or Rockingham County, I'm not going to get a car from anybody else. Harrisonburg Nissan's truck and SUV monster sale. Up to $6,000 in cash savings on Nissan Titan and Frontier. Stop by and you'll understand why everybody's talking about Harrisonburg Nissan. Ready for a new TV? Drop by Crutchfield where you can enjoy shopping. We're looking for a big screen TV. And I want one we can hang on the wall. Well, I'm sure we have a set that'll make you both happy. The good folks at Crutchfield will help you make a smart decision. Relax and compare similar models in a home-like setting. Delivery is free and custom installation is optional. Crutchfield, it's the place to go for a great selection of flat panel TVs and the best help in town. Rio Hill, Charlottesville and Market Square East Harrisonburg. Now, bigger and better than ever, it's the one and only Powerball. Hi everybody, Mike Pace is my name. Welcome to the official Powerball drawing. $47.6 million, that's the estimated jackpot and lots of ways to win big, including our power play tonight. The multiplier is four. And stand by for your official Powerball numbers. Thanks for playing. Good luck. And here we go. Tonight's first ball is number 23. Number 23. Check your tickets carefully. There we have number 10. And a reminder, our second prize is $200,000. And those jackpots begin at $15 million. There's 48. There is 54. The Powerball still to come. Last white ball is Number 42, and here we go. $47.6 million in that jackpot. Powerball three, number three. Don't forget the multiplier is four. Good night and good luck. Finally tonight, the World Aquarium in St. Louis, Missouri needs money for education, conservation, and research programs, so they are putting their two-headed rattlesnake up on eBay. The unique reptile starts at $150,000. We, as it is called, is six and a half years old. It is an inch thick and four feet long. We is expected to live another 10 to 15 years. And unlike other two-headed snakes, both of its mouths are connected to the same stomach. Aquarium officials say we is at the prime age for reproduction. Now who would want that? It's <laughs> twice the chance of getting bit. Well, you know, they say two heads are better than one. <laughs> That's what I said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Quick look at the seven day, folks. Another warmer day tomorrow into the upper 40s. If it doesn't uh, hit that by midday, I think we might lose it. It'll cool off later. So, uh, potential snow showers in the mountains. Not much on accumulation and cooling off for Friday and Saturday. Almost be a bit winter like for a couple days. Mm -hmm. so I like the 50s stuff. Oh, yeah. Thanks, We're coming George. back. Thanks for staying up with us. We'll see you back Take here care. tomorrow. Good night. Nobody gets closer to college football than Jimmy Kimmel. I have to admit, I'm swooning. Tonight, see the pep talk Jimmy gave USC, plus Carmen Electron, and all new Jimmy Kimmel Live. Good times, late night tonight, only at ABC. Few things are more beautiful than a sunny day, but when weather turns severe, it can be dangerous, even deadly. The Valley Weather Net is your one source for important weather information. That's why we're always keeping an eye on conditions in your neighborhood. It also means we will interrupt any program if there's breaking weather you need to know about. And with the TV3 weather phone line and WHSV.com, the latest weather updates are available 24 hours a day. TV3's Valley Weather Net. Accurate, reliable, and making a difference for you. They are your neighbors, your family, your friends, everyday people going out of their way to make a difference. Now you can make a difference for them. Just write or email to the address on your screen and tell us about someone you know who's making a difference. Each Friday, we'll spotlight one of these local heroes. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza and WHSV TV3. The 2006 Strong Family's Great Youth Calendars are in. Go to the community page of WHSV.com and find out where to get yours. Love, care, beauty, tradition. These are the qualities you'll find in each perfectly handcrafted monument at Waynesboro Memorials. From simple markers to more decorative designs, Waynesboro Memorials has a large variety of monuments to satisfy every need. For many years, our professional staff has guided families through the process of selecting the perfect monument. Visit Waynesboro Memorials today, 1355 West Main Street, Waynesboro. Someone's life depends on you 
Virginia Blood Services. Someone's life depends on you. Give blood. Visit Virginia Blood Services local donor centers at Rockingham Memorial Hospital and Augusta Medical Center or attend a local blood drive. Call 800-989-4438 or visit vablood.org for locations and information. Winter is here. Now you can get the latest conditions plus severe weather warnings on your desktop. And it's absolutely free. Just go to whsv.com and sign up for Desktop Alerts. Brought to you by Century 21 Real Estate Unlimited. Armand Trout and Armand Trout. One call can save you. Please process. Anatomy of a rumor. Why were so many people so wrong about the fate of the West Virginia miners? Inside the communications mess that answered families' prayers, then dashed their hopes. And the courtroom appeal to God. Why did Jack Abramoff invoke the Almighty while pleading guilty? Why the faith-based plea bargain is a sign of the times. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran in Washington and Martin Bashir and Cynthia McFadden in Times Square, New York. This is Nightline, January 4th, 2006. Good evening, I'm Terry Moran. As we join you at this hour, Israel's Prime Minister Ariel Sharon is gravely ill in a Jerusalem hospital, undergoing hour after hour of surgery after suffering a devastating cerebral hemorrhage. His doctors say the bleeding in his brain has not stopped.